Yo, what is up everybody? I am Mama Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back to my channel, Mother Freaka. With my eye dog nails, I freaking got this custom set from Kira Kina Nails as you see by the title. The time has finally come. Another cafe video. I know it's been a while, but this past December, December 21st, 2021, was Diabolic Lover's 10th year anniversary. And like, first of all, like our boys have just come so far. December 21st, 2011, Diabolic Lovers released their first ever drama city, the first ever product of their freaking franchise, the Diabolic Lovers Do S Blood Sucking Drama City Volume 1, voiced by the oh so famous Hikaru Midorikawa. A lot of people don't know Diabolic Lovers first originated as a drama CD series and then they released the games and then the anime and then all the other shit but I thought why not give some love to one of my favorite franchises and do a little celebration but yeah I hope you all enjoy this Kathy video of the Diabolic Lovers 10th year anniversary with inspired drinks and treats from the anime cafe in Japan. Now Lego! I was scavenging through the internet looking for past Diabolic Lover Cafe to get a little inspiration, and then I saw this. The Diabolic Lover's premium shop that was held at Marui City in Shibuya, they had this adorable teddy cake. And you know what? We gonna do it today. But first, I really wanted to do the teddy cake, but then I also wanted to like incorporate all the boys into the cake. So we gonna make a teddy cake, and then we are gonna make little tiny adorable treats and desserts for all of the brothers. Now let's get started! First, we have our boy, our Oreo, Oreo-sama, Ayato Sakamaki. And we all know his favorite food is takoyaki. And I was like, how could I get this to fit into a cake? And then I found out that there is a thing called dessert takoyaki. So that's what we go and do for our boy. For Ayato's dessert takoyaki, you will need a cake pot maker or a takoyaki maker, but I didn't have one. So a cake pot maker works too. Pancake mix, sugar, and Nutella. So all I did was got the pancake mix, you know, mixed in all the ingredients that they were required, the flour, the eggs, the milk, all that good stuff, and just mix it all up together. And then I grabbed my handy dandy cake pot maker or a takoyaki maker if you Gucci like that. Spray some pan or nonstick spray and just carefully spoon in the batter into each of the little balls. And then when the batter starts to cook, just get little dollops of Nutella and just drop it in there. Just freaking plop them in there, put on some more batter and just flip them over and you're good. And then I just use a bamboo stick to just like twirl them and flip them all over. Also making takoyaki balls. This is not easy. This is not fun. I mean, it is kind of fun, but it won't take a lot of practice to like get the hang of it and like learn how long it takes each of them to cook but like just keep practicing and you'll get the hang of it after that I took all my little balls and I put them in a bowl and just rolled them in powdered sugar after that we go and put everything together put them on a little bowl and drizzle some chocolate syrup on top and put on a cute adorable Ayatol topper and boom Ayatol's dessert takoyaki is done and just put that aside for now because next is friggin fedora boy and we all know that Raito Sakamaki loves his macarons. All you need is macaroons, any flavor of your choosing. And just for a little spice, just for a little hint of Raito, I use some green matcha powder. And Raito's item is pretty simple. Get some macaroons, sift matcha powder on top, put on your Raito topper, and boom, done. Next, Kanato, your time has already come because you getting a whole ass teddy cake. Next, next is for our boy, Reiji. A man I would gladly let poison me with my tea and make me clean up the mess. Mess. And for his item, I was inspired by a lot of previous cafes I noticed, and even like some of the official art, they always put him with like a blue rose, like a really nice royal blue rose, and that's what I wanted to play off of. So for Rady's item, you will need blue melting chocolate, rose molds, and some loose Earl Grey tea leaves. First, what you go and do is get a melting pot thingy or whatever, however you do it, and melt your blue chocolate melts. And while your chocolate is melting, you're gonna get your rose molds, grab your Earl Grey tea leaves, and just sprinkle it on the inside of the mold so then when the chocolate is done we get a really nice cool effect and when the chocolate is completely melted you're just gonna get a spoon and start carefully pouring the chocolate into your mold and make sure to grab your mold and just shake and tap it on the table just to eliminate any kind of air bubbles and then put it in the fridge to harden and then when it is done you will get these beautiful gorgeous blue chocolate roses with like sprinkles of earl grey on top take your freaking little ragey topper and just stab it in there and you are done. Next, 
is my favorite boy, Baby Shoe. It is Shoe Sakamaki's time to shine. And for his item, I took a little inspiration from more of like the official art as well as a pin one of my beautiful babies sent me to my P.O. Box. He's just chilling, just sleeping on a beautiful yellow donut because he's so cute with yellow frosting. And that's what we gonna do. For Shoe Sakamaki's item, you will need yellow melting chocolate, sprinkles, and mini donuts. And that's basically it. All you gonna do, same thing as Reiji, same thing as his freaking brother. Melt your yellow chocolate and then you're going to grab your little mini glazed donuts and just carefully blop them in and just coat the top. Be careful not to burn yourself and just carefully coat the top part of the donut. And before the chocolate melts, just start sprinkling the top and then just put them on the side on a plate to harden. And when they done, get your shoe topper, put it on top and boom, shoes yellow donuts are done. And next is for our baby Subanu. And for his item, I was inspired by one of the previous cafes. I saw that for him, they had like this flower rose strawberry and I was like, I'ma fucking make that. And all you need is strawberries and powdered sugar. And y'all, I tried so hard. I tried so hard to make beautiful, gorgeous roses out of strawberries for our boy. I'll put the link in the description to all the tutorials I was trying to follow. But all you basically do is like, if this is the strawberry, you're just gonna go like this. Hello, Ren. Get like a really sharp knife and you're just gonna carefully cut down and then just go all the way around. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to the videos I follow that explained it better. You just need a very sharp knife and you need a lot of coordination skills that I do not have. And then eventually, if you like just carefully slice around, it will look something like this. Mine is not 100% perfect. Do I look like a fruit arts person? The answer is no. But like, I tried my best. The second one looked a little cuter, but like, this is not my strong suit. I, I don't worry, I'm not quitting my day. Job. Then I just put on some powdered sugar and put on our little baby Subaru on top and boom. Subaru's rose strawberries with powdered sugar is done. And now it is time for Kanato's item that ties this whole family together for once in their goddamn life, the teddy cake. And all the things you need are simple. You will need a dome cake pan, any cake batter of your choosing. I decided to use like white vanilla basic cake cause I'm boring and I don't really eat that much cake really. White frosting, food coloring, specifically brown and cookies. I recommend smaller cookies. The ones you see, the ones you see, the freaking Snickerdoodle $5 ones from Safeway I bought, I did not end up using it. You you will see black and white fondant and first what we gonna do is make the cake i used good old pillsbury doughboy vanilla freaking white cake added all the necessity ingredients the milk the oil the whatever you already know what we do and mix it all up and pour it into the dome i didn't really read the instructions because I'm stupid. I kind of just assumed it would be like any other cake pan. Is that wise? I don't know. Don't listen to me. But I just like, you know, eyeballed it like cupcake style. I just poured it and just filled it up about three quarters of the way full. And you know what? I think it kind of worked out at the end. It took like a little over a half hour. Just keep an eye on it. Because the dome cake pan is a lot more deeper, like in steeper than a regular cake pan. So it's gonna take a little longer for the inside to get fully cooked because it's so deep. Just keep an eye on it. And eventually I got this golden brown top and then I tested it out with my bamboo stick and it was good to go. Next, we are gonna do the what is this called? Leveling it? I don't have a leveler, my sister does, but I filmed these videos at like three, four in the morning, so I did not feel like sneaking in my sister's room just to go find her leveler and all her shit. So um, I just put the cake sideways, grabbed a knife, and just went to town. <laughs> Hello? Hold on, my LP is full, hold on. Let me send my boys to class real quick. Look at them all go to class. But yeah. It turned out okay. Three out of 10 kind of tantrums. And after the cake was cooled down, it is time to icing. And whether you bought your own white icing or made your own, it is time to grab the food coloring. And I was trying really hard to make the frosting color like match Teddy. And I was just trying really hard to just carefully do one drop at a time because I would rather have this cake too light than too dark. And maybe after like five, six glomps later, I ended up with a color I, I 
was okay with, so I just stopped there and called it a day. Gotta stop your too much gene, cause when your too much gene kicks in, there's no going back. And now it is time for the frosting. Also disclaimer, even though it's probably fucking obvious, I am not a baker. All of the bakers and pastry chefs in the comments, I hope my video does not offend you. I'm just a weeb at three in the morning trying her best, but I just used a knife and was just carefully trying to smooth out the icing. It wasn't a hundred percent perfect, but you know, I, I, we were gonna be here all day. Just gonna leave it, cause I'm just gonna keep fucking it up the more I fuck up with it. You gotta stop your too much gene. Done is better than perfect. When it's time to stop, you stop. Why am I so aggressive today? And now it is time for the little accessories. And first we start with Teddy's mouth. I took my freaking white fondant and I just freehand and molded it in my hand, kind of like half circle to freaking suit Teddy's mouth. And then just dabbed a little frosting and just plooped it on the placing on like the bottom part so it would look like Teddy's mouth. And then it was time for the eye. I took my black fondant and just made a little tiny circle, dabbed a little frosting just to glue it onto the cake. And then I used a dab just a little smidge of white writing frosting just to give that little glisten in Teddy's eyes because he's a beautiful soul. Aren't you so beautiful, Teddy? Next is the smile. And TBH, this part was the hardest because it was like hard to make the fondant like skinny enough but not too skinny to where the fondant would just break apart but then also not to make it too thick to where it would be too heavy and then gravity would do its thing and just like push it down even though I had frosting to glue it. But eventually I freaking came up with something. Like I said, done is better than perfect. Perfect. I don't got time for this shit. I rolled up a strip, put on the frosting, and just pressed it on Teddy's mouth, just praying it would not fall. Then I did two little strips of black fondant for the little stitching on Teddy's mouth, and next was for Teddy's eye patch. I just molded a black strap of black fondant, plopped it on the top, and then I just bullshit a circle for Teddy's eye patch cover, and then with white riding frosting, I just did his little heart spoon design thingy. What is that anyway? Teddy, what is it on you? Is it just a heart? And now, this is where it all goes downhill. So those snickerdoodles I used in the beginning, those were way too big and um way too thick. And first of all, I didn't even want to use those cookies. My first instinct, we talked about it on my Twitch stream. At first, I wanted to use Nilla cookies because it looked closely to the ones that were actually used in Teddy's cake at the cafe. So I wanted to use Nilla wafer cookies, but for some reason, I couldn't find them anywhere. Like legit, I went to so many different Safeways and Target in different cities for like weeks. I, I couldn't fucking find them. I don't know what it was. All they had was like the really mini ones and they were too small and I didn't want to use them. So I gave up and just bought these $5 freaking Snicker cookies from freaking Safeway. So when I was getting ready to like finish the cake, like I already finished, I finished the whole damn thing. It was time to add the finishing touches, which were the ears. And then when I was doing the thing, I realized these cookies are way too fucking big and way too fucking thick. I first tried to like stew, I don't know why I did this. I stupidly cut around the edge of the cookie just thinking making it smaller would help. It, it did not. And I literally had to freaking give Teddy emergency brain surgery and take a knife and just carve into his brain to try to just make a hole to fit the cookies in there, to put the cookies in his head. But then I realized, Fuck, if I keep trying to push this cookie in the cake, it's gonna literally break it in half. And then when I was trying to make a bigger hole, I just noticed I was just fucking up the inside of the cake and it was like fucking up like the evenness of it all. And I was like, motherfucker, what do I do? I did not just spend all these hours to just freaking not have it work when I finally sit down and finally finish it. So then, I still write those macaroon cookies, which I mean, fitting kind of the wood and then just put them inside the holes of the cake and you know what it was perfect and I think it actually suited them a lot better because they were more smaller and then I was able to take the frosting and put a rim and it like actually looked perfect and I was like shit why didn't I do this beforehand I just wasted five dollars on freaking snickerdoodle cookies but you know what it worked out in the end the teddy cake is now done and it looks pretty damn adorable like I know it is not the prettiest it is not the cleanest cake but you got to admit it's pretty damn cute and I was pretty happy with how it came out like the struggles were worth it and now it is time to freaking put it all together first we gotta add our little kind of the baby onto the cake it is so bloody cute get it bloody diabolic lovers vampire and I'm sorry I'm stupid <laughs> and then 
I just got a plate, put the cake on top of it, and then I just started decorating it. I just started putting all the little desserts of all the brothers all over the plate. And I don't know, this was kind of mad fun. Like, it was kind of fun just making cute little treats that weren't that hard to do for each of the boys and just like making a freaking big entree, a freaking little hors d'oeuvres tray, if you will. I'm so happy I decided to just like not do the drinks this time and just try to do something different. But yeah, the freaking Diabolic Love is 10th year anniversary Kanato Teddy Dessert Tree Entree Adorf Plate is done. But don't worry, I didn't leave y'all hanging. The Diabolic Lover's 10th year anniversary drink. The Animage Cafe, they just used red grape juice. So I decided to mix it up, you know, add a little spice, if you will. So we are going to make a beautiful red drink with a red candy rim. For this drink, you will need cranberry juice, Sprite, simple syrup, machinal cherry syrup, and for the glass rim, you will need light corn syrup, red gel food coloring, and sugar. First, we gotta make the candy rim. Add one cup of sugar, half a cup of water, and half a cup of light corn syrup and stir it all together in the beginning before you turn on the stove mix it all up together just so it is all combined and then after you mixed it all up together and made it evenly combined then you are gonna put the stove on high medium heat and I learned from my mistakes when making syrup and just do not stir it while it is boiling and cooking do not stir it after you mix it all up together and turn on the stove just leave it alone I have a candy monitor so I just kept an eye on it and just waited for it to get about 300 degrees and it like took I don't know it felt like it took forever, but it could have just took 10 minutes. I don't know. I don't know how long it took. But after the candy monitor reached about 300 degrees, you want to take out the candy monitor, put the heat on low, and then add about one teaspoon of red food coloring. And then just mix, mix, mix. And as you see, it gets a very, very bloody red. It was gorgeous. A little does go a long way. And this is where disclaimer, listen to my mouth, listen to my pie hole. You need to be very, very careful when handling this shit. Gloves and oven mitts are a must do not try to do this without gloves i swear to god you will burn your fucking hands because these this is 300 degree boiling syrup and you are gonna freaking get hurt and you're gonna motherfucking burn yourself if you do not use protection safety first children and it was so hot that i could literally feel the heat of the candy syrup like through my glove so it is it, it is important that you need to use gloves you need to use an oven mitt do not try to do this with your bare hands because if it drips and falls on your hand it will burn like a bitch and i don't want to hear it and then just put it aside for like 30 minutes to a half hour for it to harden and now it is time to make the drink you're gonna get a half cup of sprite a half cup of cranberry juice add a tablespoon of simple syrup a tablespoon of machino syrup and stir again and you're gonna get your candied rim glass put in some ice and and then pour in your drink and boom. You have the Diabolic Lover's 10th year anniversary drink. Done! And I just decided to be like a little fancy with it. I was throwing some rose petals all over the glass and then I have my adorable and then I have my adorable teddy plush that King Shiki made for me. But this is a very beautiful, very vampire aesthetic drink. And it looks great with my nails. But yeah, that is it. That is the end of the 10th year Diabolic Lovers Anniversary Cafe. I'm gonna try and get a part two out. But I made this promise on my Twitch stream that if I don't finish the Octavinel Cafe by February 21st, Azul's birthday, I gotta play fucking the horse dating sim. But yeah, so I'ma be prioritizing that one so I don't have to play some freaking weird horse shit game. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my weeb family. I love you very much and I will see you next time. Bye!